A quote from the German Shepherd Standard regarding character. The breed has a distinct personality marked by direct and fearless but not hostile expression, self-confidence, and a certain aloofness that does not lend itself to immediate and indiscriminate friendships. The dog must be approachable, quietly standing its ground and showing confidence and willingness to meet overtures without itself making them. It is poised that when the occasion demands, eager and alert, both fit and willing to serve in its capacity as companion, watchdog, blind leader, herding dog or guardian, whichever circumstances may demand. The dog must not be timid, shrinking behind its master or handler. It should not be nervous, looking about or upward with anxious expression or showing nervous reactions, such as tucking of tail, to strange sounds or sights. Lack of confidence under any surroundings is not typical of good character. Any of the above deficiencies in character which indicate shyness must be penalized as very serious faults. And any dog exhibiting pronounced indication of these must be excused from the ring. The ideal dog is a working animal with an incorruptible character combined with body and gait suitable for the arduous work that constitutes its primary purpose. This quote from the standard is the basis of our belief that ideal temperament in our breed is one of the most important aspects of the German Shepherd Dog. It is not by accident that character is described in the second paragraph of the breed standard, hence its importance. Without proper character, the dog is not a true German Shepherd Dog. Our breed is very versatile and is used for many purposes. A partial list of these accomplishments would include their use as a herding dog, a show dog, an obedience or tracking dog, a search and rescue dog, a military dog, used in the sport of Schutzen as a police dog, as a companion dog, a guide dog. All of these endeavors require a sound temperament. At one end of the spectrum of permissible temperament, we see a child's companion. And at the other end, we see a trained police dog. All of these tasks require a rock-solid nervous system and demand that the dog be completely sound mentally. A dog is the product of both his heredity and his environment. Both factors are of great importance in creating the ideal for which we strive. The temperament test has been designed to give us an indication of this soundness or lack thereof. It is not a test that requires the aggressiveness of the Schutzen or police dog, but it should measure overall soundness in the dog. The test itself was adopted by the German Shepherd Dog Club of America in 1976 and is based on the temperament test of the Doberman Pinscher Club. A regional club wishing to host the test must provide the following. Number one, an area approximately 75 by 75 feet. Outdoors is preferable. If the test is to be held in conjunction with a confirmation and or obedience show, the test area must be outside the normal flow of traffic and must not be within the show ground limits. Second, we need an aluminum can containing 10 to 15 marbles or stones. Third, a blind capable of hiding a person. This barrier can be a sheet of plywood, a large table, or a standing screen. Fourth, a black spring opening umbrella of good size, plus a spare just in case. Fifth, a polyethylene sheet, four feet by 15 feet, preferably black in color. 
Sixth, a portable exercise pen, which can be laid flat for the dog to traverse. This should also be four feet by 15 feet. Seventh, we need clothes for the weird stranger. A wide brimmed hat, a long floppy coat, goggles or large dark sunglasses, a strong stick or bat. Eighth, a blind will be needed to hide the weird stranger if no other natural cover is available. Ninth, a clipboard for the evaluator. Tenth, a table and four chairs. Eleventh, we need a 22 caliber pistol for the gun test. And we need the caps to go with it. Please be sure to provide enough caps to cover all the dogs. Three per dog are needed, and it is wise to have extras in case of duds. The rule of thumb is to provide a box of 100 caps as if for a 30 dog test. And 12th, we need approximately 15 bricks or large stones to mark starting locations. Sponsoring club must also provide the following personnel. Number one, a registration clerk. Two, a neutral stranger. Three, a friendly stranger. Fourth, the can rattler. Fifth, the gun person. Sixth, the umbrella opener. And seventh, the weird or aggressive stranger. The club must also provide a videotape of the test. This tape will be sent to the temperament testing chairman by the senior evaluator. Dogs must be 12 months of age or older to participate in the test. The senior evaluator or a regional evaluator will start to set up the course one and a half to two hours before the test. This is a layout of the recommended configuration of the test site. The course should be decided by the space available and the terrain. You will notice that the entry table is at the beginning of the test and away probably 25 feet from the start of the test. It is the closest to the neutral stranger. The first test is the neutral stranger. Next we have the friendly stranger. Third we have the hidden clatterer. Next the gun person. Next we have the umbrella test. After that the footing test with a polyethylene and later on the exercise pen. And then the person proceeds around to the weird stranger which uh, will be the last test. There is some paperwork involved prior to the actual test. The entry clerk's duties include the following. Number one, making out the top of the score sheets. Be sure the person who does this prints very legibly. Two, be certain that everyone involved in the test signs a disclaimer form one for the helpers and another for the exhibitors. Three, give a handler sheet to each exhibitor. The senior evaluator should meet with his helpers and explain in detail their duties. A test is only as good as the helper's ability to do his or her task properly. The next step is for the senior evaluator to explain the test to the exhibitors from information taken from the handler sheet. Each handler receives a copy of this sheet. For instance, the dog must be kept on a loose lead throughout the test. No obedience command should be given to the dog during the test as this, this does not permit the dog to react in a positive way to the stimulus of the various exercises. The senior evaluator should show the score sheet and explain the scoring in detail. 
at the top of the sheet. Everything has been filled out by the entry clerk, including the information on the dog. And um, there's, a, there's a blank spot for the senior evaluator's signature. Now, the scoring itself is done in the following manner. First of all, there's a possibility of a plus three to a minus three. On the positive side, a plus three would be a very strong approach. Needs, the dog needs no encouragement. Two, a plus two, would be a strong approach, needs little encouragement. And a plus one would be a mild approach. The dog would need encouragement. A zero is no response to the test at all or to the stimuli does not react. A minus one would be mild avoidance, no recovery. A minus two would be strong avoidance, no recovery. And a minus three would be a panic behavior, strong escape reaction. Now a failing score would be any minus score. A zero response, as I mentioned, would not fail the dog. It has to be a minus score. The senior evaluator then puts an extra dog through the test. This dog is not scored. The handlers follow along to see the test and can better understand through observation. The handlers learn where and when they can encourage their dog. It also gives the senior evaluator a chance to check on the helpers and see if they really understand what they are to do. The tests themselves have various objectives and occur in the following order. The first test is the behavior towards strangers. The objective is to measure the dog's reaction to strangers in a non-threatening situation. The first part of this is the neutral stranger. In this, the helper approaches owner to a distance of about two feet, stops, then proceeds slowly to the handler and engages in a conversation for 30 seconds, ignoring the dog. The second part of this would be the friendly stranger. A different helper approaches dog and owner in a happy and exuberant fashion. About six feet from the dog, the helper bends down and pats his leg, calling to the dog, then proceeds closer and touches the dog, then puts a hand in a non-threatening gesture on handler's arm or back while engaging in an animated conversation. The second test is a reaction to oral stimuli or noise. The objective here is to measure the alertness to oral stimuli and the degree of investigative behavior towards the stimuli. The first thing is the hidden clattering. The owner and the dog will walk towards a blind behind which is a helper, seated with his back to the blind, and in his right hand, he's holding an aluminum can. When the dog is 30 feet from the blind, the evaluator will signal the helper to begin rattling the can. Dog and helper continue to approach the blind. The dog may be encouraged to investigate. Second part is where the helper continues to rattle the can until the dog comes around the blind to investigate. Then the can is held perfectly still. The dog has 30 seconds to investigate the can. Here too, the dog may be encouraged by the handler using expressions like, what is it? The third part of this test is the gun test. The handler and dog move 15 feet beyond the helper with the gun. Handler will stand with the dog in a standing or sitting position. No command should be given. The exhibitor facing away from the helper whose back is also turned to the dog and handler. At a signal from the evaluator, the helper fires three shots in sequence from a 22 caliber pistol pointed at the ground. The sequence should be bang, bang, pause, bang. 
If the dog turns and moves towards a sound, he may be permitted to do so for a few feet. The dog may be encouraged as before. The third test is a reaction to visual stimuli, or the umbrella test. The objective here is to measure the dog's reaction to sudden visual stimuli, the degree of investigative behavior, and startle recovery. In this test, the handler and dog proceed preferably downwind towards the helper who is sitting on a low chair directly in the dog's path, but facing 90 degrees to the side. As the dog approaches, the helper slowly raises a spring-loaded umbrella in the closed position. This occurs when the dog crosses a pre-marked point nine feet from the tip of the umbrella. The handler will begin to raise the umbrella whose tip has been resting on the ground. As the dog crosses a pre-marked point three feet from the tip of the umbrella, the helper will release the catch, opening the umbrella directly towards the dog. The open portion of the umbrella is then lowered and rested on the ground, which the helper retains handle in hand to prevent the umbrella from moving. Dog is allowed to move forward with encouragement, if necessary, to investigate the umbrella. The fourth test is the footing test. The objective here is to measure the dog's reaction to unusual footing. The first part of this test the handler and dog approach a strip of polyethylene approximately 15 feet long and 4 feet across, laid on the ground and weighted at the corners and side. With a dog on a loose leash, they proceed directly along the length of the strip. After completing the above, they cross an aisle of normal footing at least 10 feet wide and then proceed the length of an exercise pen laid flat on the ground. This simulated grating should also be approximately 15 feet long by 4 feet wide. The next test is the aggressive stranger. This is test number five. And the objective here is to measure the dog's capacity to recognize and react in a positive guarding manner to a potentially threatening situation. And in the event of a threat, to react in an aggressive, confident manner. In this test, the test has three parts. The dog will wear a strong lead and collar. The helper, preferably an experienced agitator, will be carefully selected and instructed. He or she will be dressed in, an, in odd clothing, such as a wide-brimmed hat, long overcoat, goggles, etc., and carrying a stick, cane, or baseball bat. Handler and dog proceed towards the aggressive stranger hidden behind a blind. When the dog reaches a pre-marked point 20 feet from the blind, the helper staggers out and crosses dog's path, making weird motions, sounds, and using the stick as a cane. Handler halts as soon as helper appears. After helper has crossed the dog's path for a distance of 15 feet, he turns towards the dog, continues the weird sounds, motions, using the cane and slowly and tentatively advances on the dog. Handler remains stationary. If the dog exhibits a positive reaction, continue to the next part. The last part is the aggressive stranger now raises the cane or stick and makes threatening gestures towards the dog. The gesture should be waving of the stick, beating the stick on the ground, and so forth. The same weird sounds, motions, and staggering should continue. When a positive reaction occurs, the helper should back off in a furtive manner. If a mild negative reaction occurs, which is not corrected almost immediately by encouragement, the helper should discontinue. In the event of a panic reaction, the test should immediately discontinue. When putting on a temperament test, it is important that the helper subject each dog to the same type of test. For instance, the umbrella should be opened at the same distance for each dog. It is also important that other dogs and animals be kept away from the testing area, so the dog's attention will be on the test being applied, not them. The area used should be a, as distraction-free as possible. 
For instance, don't hold tests near a train track where trains will be roaring closely by. If a parking lot is used, be sure cars will not be trying to drive through or driving closely by and distract the dogs by the noise of the car. Let's watch a few dogs go through the temperament test. Can I say? The dog's reaction to the weird stranger has three parts, and each part is judged separately. First, when the stranger appears, secondly, on the approach, and finally, on the threat. A few final thoughts and things to remember. Be sure to set up the ring so that the senior evaluator and the video photographer have a good view of the various tests without interfering with the test. Be certain that all helpers thoroughly understand their duties. All helpers are important, but be certain that the following people are selected for their ability. The friendly stranger. They should be an exuberant person with a great approach and experience with dogs. The umbrella person must be alert and the timing must be perfect to make the test viable. The weird stranger should be a great actor with the ability to draw out the dog. It is important that the senior evaluator give out the score sheets in the field to the exhibitor. All score sheets should be retained by the, the senior evaluator on the clipboard. Only the evaluator and the exhibitor should be aware of the score given and whether the dog passed or failed. Temperament certificate will be sent by the temperament chairman to the exhibitors. 
Temperament faults may be largely environmental. Dogs who have previously failed the tests may return for reevaluation after six months. Any regional club interested in hosting a temperament test should contact the temperament chairman of the German Shepherd Dog Club of America and pertinent material and information will be sent to them.